We've seen how lambda.racket, when run in regular eager plate, gives us an eager version of the curly language. While if we run lambda.racket in lazy plate, then we get a lazy version of curly. Now we took more control in the case of laziness. Our more lazy interpreter will be a lazy curly no matter whether we run it in plate or lazy plate. What we want to do now is do the same kind of thing for eagerness. We want to make eager evaluation explicit so that our new eager interpreter will behave as an eager curly no matter whether we run it in eager or lazy plate. And that means we'll have understood and taken uh, control over the eager evaluation. So how do things happen right now? Right now when you call interp of an expression with two sub-expressions, so here we've got a plus e with a num e1 and num e2, then of course interp dispatches to the plus e case which has a num plus with two recursive calls to interp. Not only does plate have to actually make both of these calls to interp, but it needs to remember as it's making this first call to interp that it comes back and does the num place afterwards. That is, it starts working on this first interp num e, and then somehow plate remembers as, a, as a, on its to-do list that once it gets a value to go in place of this dot, then it should keep trying to work on the num plus, continuing on with this interp for the expression 2. So that is, when it uh, reduces this interp num e1 to num v1, now it has a value, there's nothing left to do right here, and so it consults its to-do list. The to-do list says that num v1 goes here, now let's start working on the interp of num e2. So interp of num e2 is now what plate is working on, while it remembers still that it has to do the num plus in the future. The to-do list has changed to remember that once you get the second value, then you can actually perform the plus. That is, we continue interpreting num e2, eventually get a num v2. At that point, plate will consult the, consult the to-do list, which says put it back together as num plus num v1 num v2, and then actually perform the addition. So this is conceptually how plate's working, and the important conceptual part here is this notion of a to-do list that records what we need to do in the future after we've gotten to a value with the current expression. This to-do list has a better name. It's called a continuation. A continuation is how to continue with the computation once the expression you're looking at right now has been turned into a value. So here is a continuation, or to-do list, that says once we get a value, continue on by interpreting and adding uh, with num plus. Here's a bigger continuation. It says that once you get a value, then um, you need to work on this called f, and then multiply those, and once that's a value, then you need to add it to 3. So this, this to-do entry can be an arbitrarily large expression wrapped around the part that we're currently trying to turn into a value. While we can represent a continuation this way, uh, this continuation is really two items on a to-do list. It is get around to doing a times, but then also get around to doing a plus. So we might represent this, instead of nested expressions, as a to-do list or a stack because we're going to keep adding things to the top of the to-do list and removing things from the top of the to-do list, working our way down into the list. That is, once we get a value here, start to uh, continue working on the, the multiply, and once this multiply turns into the value, later we'll do the plus. It's the same information in these two boxes, just putting it in a list form makes it easy to manipulate the part that we're currently working on. Sometimes the term stack is used when people actually mean continuation, other times, um, stack is used to mean a to-do list that is specifically limited relative to the overall amount of memory that you have. That is a bounded stack where you can have a stack overflow running out of that special kind of memory. Uh, I'll use stack and continuation more or less interchangeably without implying a particular bound on the stack. 